Hey guys, it's time to recap. It's Saturday, and uh, I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. We've been talking about finances this week. I certainly hope that you've watched every single video. I want you to know that I'm not preaching to try and get your money in any way. I'm not trying to preach to tell you that God needs your money, because he doesn't, but he does need a heart, one that is willing to do uh, his word. Remember, the Bible tells us to be... Uh, doers of the word and not hearers only. We studied from Malachi chapter 3 starting with verse 8 this week where it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. Now again, I'm going to stop right there real quick. You choose that. If you do not come with your tithes and give of your tithes, that's the beginning. That's 10%. That's what tithe means. If you do not give of the first 10% of what you make, then you choose this. You are cursed with a curse. In other words, your finances are in trouble before you ever get started. So we need to bring our tithes. And then as we develop our heart, we'll begin to give above and beyond the tithe. Why? Because we'll see God's goodness on us. We'll have an abundance we'll be able to give out of that abundance. Amen? You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now here's the key to start to make the turn. Okay, you ready? First of all, you repent. And then it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this. This is what God is telling you. Listen, if you've not been bringing him your tithe, repent and now bring your tithes. Come and try me. And he even says this, try me, test me, see. I'm going to show you that this works. And he says, try me now in this uh, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now there's a promise from God. But you'll never know that that promise exists unless you're a tither. Amen. And I can tell you from personal experience, be a tither. Amen. Okay, let's move down to the next part. And it says, and I re will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So not only will he pour out such blessings that your barns can't contain it, but he'll also rebuke the enemy. Remember, it's, Jesus said, the thief comes to still kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. But recognize there, we... Satan is the thief. He comes to still kill and destroy. Here it says if you're a tither that God himself will rebuke the devourer. The one that tries to keep your seed from maturing. Okay? It goes on to say um, verse 12 and all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land says the Lord of hosts. We looked and we found out that that um, for, for instance in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it, it says if you'll diligently keep his commandments, judgments, and statutes, and seek his face, that all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, and he'll set you high above all the nations. That's the Christian nation. That's us, okay? And it goes on to tell us that, he, that we are his special people. He'll bless the works of our hands and everything else, okay? We also found out Proverbs 10.22, it says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Rich! Now, again, let's not get carried away with rich. You could be rich in a lot of different things spiritually. You could be rich in peace. You could be rich in, in health. You could be rich in happiness. You could be rich in joy. You can be rich in compassion. You could be rich in, in uh, everything, right? So when it says this, it's the blessing of the Lord, but that's the whole man. That includes your finances. You can be rich even in your finances as long as you don't make your money your God. Amen. Come on. We got to have a heart after God. He's not worried about money. But remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, not money, the love of money is the root of all evil because if you love money, you'll make it your God. It'd be idolatry to you. And then finally, if you notice, when we do all of this, if you look in, in Isaiah chapter six, 
60, uh, verse 1 and on. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. This is talking about end times, and the deep darkness of the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your coming. In other words, when God's goodness and grace and mercy is on us, guess what? Gentiles, that's the non-believer, will come to us and kings will come to the brightness of our rising. And then it goes on to say, lift up your eyes all around and see they all gather together they come to you your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side then you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you now again this all takes place why because of a right attitude of our heart it begins with the tithe 10% belongs to the Lord. Don't be cursed with a curse. Give that 10%. Take it to a storehouse. That's the place that you're being fed spiritually. And give and watch God. See what he does to your finances. Okay. Tomorrow's Sunday. Go to church. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.